This is a pivotal game for Jimmy Connors. Remember now, he was down for love here in the second set. He's won three consecutive games. I think John McEnroe would not be you know, the great champion that he obviously is if he didn't have some sort of control over his temper or temperament, even though he does lose it from time to time. And I think he, he, he's well aware how important this game is now. He's got to settle down and hope that Jimmy doesn't play a couple of great shots, try and consolidate his, his break. John McEnroe, you're going to the net with maybe the best net player in the game. He and Borg are both phenomenal, but McEnroe, when he comes to the net, just seems to have the uncanny ability to control the ball. Back at the net, McEnroe, as we're in game eight, second set. McEnroe leading 30-15 in this game over Connors, and he's won a point at the net, then he's buried one at the net and given it right back. Connors obviously now buoyant from his three consecutive victories here in these games. But McEnroe not giving in, needless to say. whether John's unhappy with the call or with himself. There's the answer. No, he's, he's unhappy with the call. He's unhappy with the call. He, he felt like he hit her out as soon as he hit it, and then I think he felt like it landed on the line. That's it. That goose. Now the pressure's kind of swinging back a little bit. He won that game at 40-15. Interesting point. This is only the third time in the whole match we've gone to Deuce. And the last two games have gone to Deuce now. Ah! And there is the famous Jimmy Connor backhand. That's just what John McEnroe didn't want at Deuce, four three. It was a beautiful shot. A little bit short to serve, and Jimmy stepped around it on his two-hander and just flailed at the ball. Jimmy shaking his head. John knows he made a mistake. Advantage counters. Ooh, service ace. Beautiful shot. Seven aces now for McEnroe. Connors has none. Last night against Carolinas, Connors had no service aces in three sets. back to Connors. That was a good move on Jimmy's part. He hit a slightly better forehand than he had anticipated again. Sometimes you do that. And immediately he saw that he had an extra good shot. He immediately started to come to the net where he hadn't planned that. That wasn't part of his plan. Ah! The man's had a tough afternoon. He's won four in a row now from John McEnroe in the second set. Word for all. That time Jimmy got up to the short forehand and played the little angle that 
McEnroe was looking for before. McEnroe was there. He, he knew where Jim was going to hit it, but he didn't control the ball. He actually put it by the top spinner, which is not. Well, just keep in mind that it was 4-1 McEnroe when we had the argument at the umpire's chair that proved to be a victory for Jimmy Connors, and it turned his game around, and now we're 4-4. McEnroe has not won a game since the argument. No, John's thinking about that right now. In fact, I think it was 4-0 when they had the argument. And, uh, you're right. And John's, uh, and it was Jimmy's serve, and they got Jimmy 30-15 on that, on that serve, which he eventually won. John's giving that a lot of thought, and very soon the umpire's going to penalize him. McEnroe in a state of meditation. I'm not sure I'd call this a show by John McEnroe. I honestly believe that, that he's sorting out all of the events that have occurred in the last four games. What has happened to my game since the argument at the chair? Pretty grim look on his face right now. Let's see if this changes his strategy. change your strategy when you've got a pinpoint corner shot like that. That was a great shot. Very upset right now. I mean. <laughs> 15 all. Connors is smiling. That was a rather late call. It was. Well, not smiling anymore. I think, though, you know, as much as anything, while he complains about the line call, <laughs> he's just climbed over the net. While he complains about the line this at McEnroe. That's right. officials are around. I think what he's really complaining about is the delay that McEnroe had exercised a moment ago. So we've certainly been witness to some rather bizarre behavior here in the match. Absolutely incredible. Never seen that happen before. Although, Owen, you have to admit that this is maybe what we're going to be witnessing in professional tennis as the players get more and more confidence in their control of their own fate, their own fortune, their own matches. Connors earlier in the week was well quoted in a local newspaper story about how he feels the players should make their own line calls. The players should be in control of the match. That they don't uh, need to have amateur linesmen. Well, I think I think we are we are definitely heading towards professional linesmen, but uh, I, I don't believe the players can see the ball on the move as well as the linesmen can see it uh, when they're sitting in a chair. Number one, uh, number two. Number two. Number two, I, I think in 1982 and in future years, they'll make the rules stricter and stricter and stricter, and you simply will not be able to do what we just witnessed there. You'll, to do something like that, you'd be immediately thrown out of a match, and that's very costly, obviously. That's 
crowd. On the other hand, Owen, the players know this, is that they can take it pretty far because sponsors put up a lot of money for these tournaments. A lot of people have come out today to watch, and they know that the sponsors and the tournament officials, because of the sponsorship, have to go as far as they can in accommodating the players because this is the entertainment that people came to see. That's exactly right, especially in a tournament like this. Jimmy Connors has taken the lead in set number two, five games to four, an incredible comeback when you consider that he was down four love in the second set. He has won five consecutive games from John McEnroe. This is the Michelob Light Challenge coming to you live from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. I'm Arthur Ashe, National Campaign Chairman for the American Heart Association. When I had my heart attack, I went to a place like this, an around-the-clock emergency care unit. Here, sophisticated monitoring and diagnostic equipment ensured that treatment was begun as quickly as possible. The American Heart Association helped fund the studies and research that set the standards for emergency cardiac care. Give to your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. An interesting position for the linesman to take on the serve. Getting down as low as he does? Well, not only as low, but so far outside the line, it's difficult for him to make a call on the outside line. The linesman has hands and knees behind Jimmy Conner. You see him there with the white hat. Look at how far outside the line he is. Fifteen. Connor's battling back into the game. Very responsive crowd here this afternoon. Uh, there's the racket right control of McEnroe. You'll never see touch. a better example. Beautiful touch. He actually controlled himself extremely well in that game because of 30 love. He felt like he hit a serve that was on the line, the umpire called it out late, quite a late call, and he immediately took good control of himself and went quietly back and served the second ball. Five all, second set, and that end of the five game winning streak of Jimmy Connors. Love. Well, I hope that both of these players now have settled down to play championship tennis and let the theatricals be moved back into the closet. Yes, there's no place for what went on in the game, in, in any game, but certainly not in tennis. <laughs> 15 off. Been a long match and both of these players battling. We were at seven six and set number one, now five five in the second set. Best out of five. Ooh. 
match. Jimmy Connors was able to buy some points as it crawled over the net. That time it didn't happen. It's 40 30. takes the lead on John McEnroe. Players ground transportation is provided by leader AMC Jeep on North Cicero Avenue. And the Hyatt Regency O'Hare. Well, that's where the players and officials are staying. As active and exciting as O'Hare International Airport, yet offering soundproof and elegant rooms and suites, the best to be found in the Chicago area. Jimmy Connors has battled back to take the lead. He had trailed 4 love in the second set. Went ahead 5-4. to four. Then McEnroe tied it up at 5, snapping the five-game winning streak of Jimmy Connors. Now Connors has rebounded to take a one-game 6-5 lead, and he's in position to win the second set and even the match. those of you who play tennis you can know the agony of having to come from the right line to the left line and back again physical conditioning of these players is astounding may become a factor in this match Dick if we have a real long match and we may have a real long one now Good. That was a touchpin forehand lob, and it was in. Caught John McEnroe creeping in a little bit too close. And that's a shot, as I said, that Jimmy Connors has learned recently, or in the last year, and plays extremely well. Beautiful. There they go, to the backhand of Jimmy Connors again, and paid the price. Well, he's pumped up now. I guess, I guess everyone figured that when he when he jumped across the net. <laughs> Practicing for later, do you think? Really 15. Well, actually, it's not funny because I don't really. I think when the match is finished, Jimmy will really be sorry that he went across the net, no matter how hard he argued or wants to argue for a point. I don't think he'll be happy about having gone across the net. That's out. 30 40. Once again, facing set point. Right up. A standing ovation for Jimmy Connors, and does he appreciate it? The match is even. A 7-5 winner in the second set. Well, you'd expect it from McEnroe and Connors. We've said it before, and it may be redundant, but it's true. 7-6 to McEnroe, 7-5 to Connors. We're in the third set.
we'll see some good tennis in this third set now. I think McEnroe will settle down. And we should see some great tennis. Not we haven't seen some bad tennis already. We were just saying that we're going to see them settle down and play tennis. I think, yeah. I think he's real upset with himself. But uh, he knows it's important. It's still a very important match. and. Uh, I believe that was out. Well, that was very close. To give McEnroe credit for a lot of restraint there. Again. Well, as you know, when it doesn't do any good to lose control. No. And these players know it also. But uh, in the intense rivalry and the competitive battle going on on the floor, sometimes it eludes you. like taking candy from a baby uh, giving Jimmy a little short two-hander like that and coming in that was he didn't chip as well as he intended to chip 40 15 oh that's an unusual one for Jimmy Connors he got the winner on his forehand and drilled it in one nothing he leads set number three. This is the Michelob Light Challenge coming to you from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. Okay, Michelob Light. With the score tied at two sets each, we pick up the action in the fifth game of the last set. Fifteen. That lob, which has been a weapon of Connors throughout this match, continues to work for him. Game to Connors, and it's three-one fifth set. I was just thinking about one of the comments you made earlier in the day, Dick. I bet some of those umpires that didn't get didn't draw duty on this match are probably quite happy now that they're not sitting out there in the chair <laughs> after what's going on. You know, in both the semifinals and the finals, there have been a lot of close calls, some controversy, a lot of player opinion being expressed. Uh, I'm looking at the, thinking of uh, Mr. Gene Davis, the umpire that did one of the matches last night. He's probably disappointed that he didn't get to do the final, but after going seeing what's going on today, I'm sure he's... Uh, Probably quite pleased that he wasn't up there. Certainly he has empathy for Mr. Layton, who is sitting in the chair this afternoon. Definitely. That time it didn't work for him. Good, rally. good lob from Jimmy. Drive John back. And it's the back Watch hand in that. Those are the kind of mistakes that maybe they wouldn't have made a few hours ago. Oh. 
you know, for this early in the season, their conditioning is superb. Their games are very sharp. Beautiful. Very nice. And it's 15:40. So he's getting up off the floor again. Nothing comes easy for Jimmy Connors. He's a scrapper. Sure. He appears to enjoy it too. He continually seems to be in that position. Last night in the semifinals, here this afternoon. Consider this: that Jimmy Connors, every match he's played this week, has gone three sets. Now he goes the maximum in the championship match. He's played a lot of tennis this week. I did. That's out. 34. I guess he just decided they wanted a lot of playing time this week. <laughs> well, if he was looking for a week of conditioning, all expenses paid, he got it. That's right. Plus a little thrown in on the side there after the expenses. <laughs> Like either sixty or a hundred thousand dollars, depending on the outcome of the match. Incredible. Can't stand prosperity or whatever, but McEnroe battled back after a large Connors lead and we're a deuce again. The second half of the match, it seems like we've been <coughs> deuced quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Advantage to McEnroe. Well, when he smells the victory, he really explodes, doesn't he? Does. he? Yeah, that was a beautiful volley. It's a difficult volley, play it with ease. And the game to McEnroe. He leads four games to one in his fifth and deciding set. This is the Michelob Light Challenge coming to you from the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago. I'm going to let you in a little secret. McEnroe and Connors back to the floor. McEnroe leading four games to one in this fifth and deciding set of the championship match in the Michelob Light Challenge in Chicago. An incredible match between Connors and McEnroe. Dick Carlson with Owen Davidson providing the commentary and what a delight it has been for us to be a party to such an outstanding match as we have witnessed this afternoon. Jimmy as it crawled over the string. Connors leading 15 love in game six, set number five. He has a long uphill battle now. Battling, leading it. 30 love.
he played. And Connor is in front of his own serve, 40 love. Jimmy's staying alive if he wins this game and hangs on to his next service game. He's got two more chances to break John McEnroe to get back into this match. After all this time, it's going to come down to two service games. Out. Couldn't keep it in. It's 40-15. Trading four games to two as he wins the game. Jimmy having some conversation with some front row fans. All right, McEnroe's service now. Jimmy's going to have to break McEnroe's serve to get back into it. He knows that there aren't too many more chances left. <laughs> nice shot by Connors, but from a technical point of view, you know, we looked at it earlier, Owen, and on a similar play, we saw McEnroe let it bounce before he played the shot. He mm -hmm. had a better chance to measure it, whereas Jimmy, a little more impatient, decided to take it on the fly. Jimmy took that one on the fly, yeah. He came in behind a very, very good approach shot. He hit a good topspin forehand down the line and came in very close to the line. Great effort by Jimmy Connors. <laughs> Terrific oh. effort by Jimmy Connors. He says, give me a little help. My racket, uh, <laughs> can you believe how far his racket went? I mean, he lost control. He's going for the shot. The racket slid across the carpet all the way over the aisle and under the first row of seats. Now, just look at the effort here by Connors. He's on the right. Look at him put on the brakes. Now, this ordinarily, I guarantee you, when I play, I don't even go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, that was a pretty good effort of John McEnroe to run down Jimmy's angle, too. Oh, oh, and he played it. Boy, that was a big shot right there. You could wait a couple of years and not see John McEnroe miss an overhead like that again. But when you're getting a little bit tired, sometimes it's hard to get up there. Getting a little tired, but that was one way of a Oh, and a great return! Great shot by oh, Connor. Shot. Great return of serve, first of all, and then just wailed at the forehand, and the crowd just loving every minute of it. This is ridiculous. Yeah. We got the same situation. 15-30, and the umpire has done it again. As well, it's 15-40, in fact. And now the umpire is penalizing him a point, so therefore he's giving the game to Connors. So we've got the same situation exactly. Four games of three. See, by, by hitting that forehand for a winner, it made the score 15-40. Right. And now the umpire is... McEnroe slammed the ball up toward the ceiling. And the umpire immediately penalized McEnroe, the point that cost him the game. It's four games to three. And immediately this time, they are rushing the referee to the floor. I hope we keep all this tape and film we're using, Dick. We might have to use it as evidence. 
to say we were here. We well, saw this spectacular match and this unbelievable goings on. This match gets the 1982 season underway, and I'll tell you, if this is indicative of the 1982 campaign, it's going to be a whale of a year. See that? There is the That's move called. by McEnroe. That's Ooh. called ball abuse in the rule book. And you can't abuse a ball without getting an automatic fine. And after being warned as many times as he was warned, There's two ways to look at this. One way to look at it is that John is doing this to himself. Yes. He knows the rules. Yes, he does. And the mistakes or the gestures that he is making are coming, unfortunately, at the most critical moments. Each has cost him a game. That's true. On the other hand, you look at interpretation of the rule book, and Mr. Layton in the umpire's chair is really not interpreting it. He is running it by the letter. That's, I agree completely. So those are your options, and you may choose for the side you wish to support. But the unfortunate fact is, is that we have been seeing this great match tarnished on several occasions. John, and I don't know exactly at exactly what point there is a point in the rule system where the player can be defaulted. And it would be a ludicrous situation after all this if there's another instant a little bit further on down the match and then the umpire defaults one of the players. Now at the umpire's chair, the referee is discussing things with the umpire. Officials are guarding McEnroe for fear he's going to walk again. Well, Jimmy doesn't want to take the point penalty, obviously. Jimmy wants to play the, the, the game out. It's ball abuse. Ball abuse is, is hitting the ball into the stands, ladies and gentlemen, towards the public. The penalty Belt. point is reversed. Let's listen now. Quiet, please. Score is 50-40. The referee, Bill Kemper, has convinced the umpire, Art Layton, to reverse his call and let them play the last point. We're at 15-40. And it's still 4-2, third set. McEnroe hopes it's not going to be the last point. Jimmy hopes it is. It's not last not the last point. Oh. <laughs> 30-40. You can't blame Jimmy Connors. You want to work for it. No, that's flower abuse. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not in the rules. This is the quietest I've ever heard the building. Yeah. Now McEnroe wanted to pump him up. He didn't like it when he got that oh. quiet. Third <laughs> bounce, played at the baseline. So Jimmy Connors, who was up 15-40, after the point reversal that could have cost McEnroe the seventh game, faces Deuce. <clears throat> Tell you what, if Connors battles back to win the game, you're going to hear a roar from this crowd. That's for sure.
And it's Connors. Would the 1982 Grand Prix rule be more tolerant of the... Less tolerant. They're much stricter. Uh -huh. They're much stricter. They, they, the move is to get the, to tighten the rules up, make them stronger and stronger and stronger, and after all the problems. Uh, Beautiful! And Connors has won this game anyway. Four three. After all the problems at uh, Wimbledon this year, that everybody read about that the, the Pro Council has decided to tighten tighten the rules up. John McEnroe is having a heated discussion with the umpire at the net right now. We don't have him on camera, but. Well, you can see there it is. He's really going at it. He's not Four happy. Half hours have been trying my behind dog. All right, just calm there. down. Basically, what John was trying to explain politely to the umpire was that he's out there working exceptionally hard, and the umpire is taking everything away from him. You have to say, though, it was a great show of sportsmanship by Jimmy Connors. Very much so, yeah. Because he was in support of playing the point and not accepting the penalty, as he was earlier, Both I times. should point out. Right. Both, Both times. times he did not want to see McEnroe penalized. Jimmy looked a little undecided as to whether he was going to rush that ball and play it or allow it to bounce. Well, he's not real confident on that forehand volley sometimes. He has that eastern grip that we talked about, and he really wasn't sure what he was going to do with that volley. All. Remember now, Connors was down three love at the start of this decisive fifth set. Was battled back from three love and four one to four three. Thirty fifteen. John talks to the crowd and gets upset at movement. I think he likes a rowdy crowd. Yeah, I think he... Out. That time he didn't get assisted by the net. Yeah, no, the net hurt him that time. If that hadn't hit the net, it might have gone in. But when it hit the top of the net, it carried on out. So it definitely didn't help him. People are just standing and cheering. And but you can see there it is. Both Jimmy and John, I think, could do without the arguments, but they certainly love this atmosphere, and they thrive in this atmosphere. They're in the center of the arena. They're in the center of the tension. They are on stage, the performers. 
And there are some players who who are not performers. They they just come to play, period, and they back up and leave. But I think that both have the theatrical flair. No doubt about it. Oh, what a volley. Football game. This crowd right. is really appreciative. Oh, they called that in. They called it in. 30 15. I don't know if we have a shot that will give you a view of it. Let's look at it again. Difficult to say, but it may have been, might have been right on the baseline. So it looked like. Fifteen thirty. Five. He had a chance. He had it set up. Completely set up. Great effort by Connors to even get there. 40-30. That's a beautiful shot. Red Deuce. They are going all the way. These two men have actually just had a tennis war here this afternoon at the horizon, and they're going to go all the way. It's there. Advantage to Connor. This is maybe the sharpest his game has been throughout the entire match this afternoon. Oh, what a beautiful pickup. Oh, incredible play at the net. Jimmy's got to be asking himself, what do I have to do to get That's it right. by him? Because he hits some great shots. Fantastic return. McEnroe picks it up. Jimmy nails a forehand down the line, and McEnroe volleys it across court for a winner. Fantastic. making great shots at the net. He makes a mistake and we're back to advantage Connors. We talked about the need for the break points to break the service of McEnroe. If Connors is to win this set and this match. Very big point now. decisive set and now has taken the lead for the first time at 5-4. Oh, and it's entirely possible that what we are watching this afternoon may be written up in tennis journals as one of the finest matches ever played. 
Well, I'm, that's, I'm sure that's going to happen, Dick. I'm sure that there'll be a lot of talk about the match, the standard of tennis, of being one of the classics. Uh, a lot of talk about the confrontation as far as uh, Jimmy actually going across the net, which never happens on a tennis court. I think that'll get a lot of play, the fact that Jimmy actually walked across the net. Here we see the break point. Now, McEnroe actually has quite an easy volley there, and he mishits it a little bit. He meant to go across court more than he did. And Jimmy was there real quickly and hit his backhand up the line. The winner. But this, this, this has got to be one of the greatest matches I've ever seen. And this crowd showing its appreciation here this afternoon for both of these players, John McEnroe and Jimmy Connors. And don't count John McEnroe out either. He, he comes back from worse situations than this, and uh, it's not like Jimmy can serve four aces past him and finish the match off. John will get into every point if he wants to. <coughs> so still a long way to go. Uh, Connors right now, who was not in the driver's seat earlier, is now because he owns the service with a chance to win the match. Jimmy, just, Jimmy doesn't have the sort of serve where he can just go out there and blister three or four unplayable serves and, and win the match. He's going to win every single point. We've talked about that before. And John McEnroe, of course, is well aware of that. He, he knows he'll get into every point. Oh, this match is four hours, 35 minutes long. Repertoire of shots from both players on that rally. From the cut to the lob, the forehand, the backhand. Phenomenal tennis, 15 all. Once again, Jimmy used that top spin forehand lob to drive McEnroe back off the net. He's used that shot a lot today. the tension in the building right now. The quietest the crowd has been. You can hear the air circulating in the building. Beautiful. Connors now the aggressor. He has been reluctant to come to the net. He has been very selective when he has come to the net. And here now, when he has a chance to win it, he elected to play the net. 15 to match point. Match point for Jimmy Connors. So many times in the match, it has seesawed back and forth, and there was no way to predict a winner. And Jimmy Connors has the opportunity as the number two player in the world to defeat number one rated John McEnroe. Coming in. 
There it is. There it is. The winner. Six seven seven five six seven seven five six four. Jimmy Cotter. John McEnroe congratulates him at the net. And this incredible match. The 1982 Michelob Light Challenge has come to an end with Jimmy Connors the winner in five sets. An incredible match. Highlighted by a superb play by both McEnroe and Connors. Highlighted by controversy. And it will be talked about for many, many weeks, months, possibly years to come. And there is a very tired Jimmy Connors. He battled, he came back, set after set after set. And a dejected John McEnroe, whose two sets that he won, both came on tiebreakers, 11-9 and 7-4, penalized once for a point that cost him a game, almost penalized the second time when they reversed the decision to take the penalty away. Controversy plagued the match involving both McEnroe and Connors. Good sportsmanship displayed by both when both did not want to solve any problems on the court by suffering penalty but wanted to settle it as tennis players. And Jimmy Connors, as much as a victory this afternoon, has enjoyed maybe the endurance of the tennis match. Executive producer for Concert Productions, Inc., Michael Cole. Steve Lieber also joined us. We want to thank you for joining us this afternoon. This is Dick Carlson. For Owen Davidson. Saying thank you for being with us for this phenomenal tennis match live from the horizon this afternoon. The Michelob Light Challenge has been brought to you by Michelob Light. With a rich, smooth taste you can pair to any beer you like. And by Grecian Formula. Let's you gradually get rid of just as much gray as you want. And Odor Eaters, the odor-destroying insoles with an activated charcoal. The winner... To climb a mountain, 8.30 p.m. Thursday on Channel 5.